that's the beautiful rhythm that we've seen from Duffy all season. All smiles from a very proud Benudian who wins the title, defends her title with maximum points, 5,200, her sixth win of the season. Save half price on fresh pork shoulder roasts, just $2.39 per pound. Save $1.30 on white whole mushrooms, $2.99 for a 10-ounce package. New frozen 9-ounce Taipei Asian-style entree, just $3.99 for select varieties. Frozen 12.3-ounce Eggo waffles, $4.59 for select varieties. $3.99 for a 5-ounce bag of select varieties of wholesome pantry organic popcorn. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can count on us. Live. From Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. You're watching Bermuda Broadcasting News. It's Friday, April the 20th. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us tonight. He was controversially removed from the post of Education Commissioner, but Freddie Evans is heading back to government. Bermuda Broadcasting has confirmed he will join another ministry. A settlement is said to include a government payout of what we are told will be $95,000 pre-tax. The settlement reportedly covers salary he did not receive during the eight months since he was let go by education, but it's been a rocky road to resolution. We understand Dr. Evans was offered a position with the Department of Workforce Development but he declined because it would have required him to report to the same permanent secretary he worked under at education. Also, the settlement for Dr. Evans was delayed as agreement reportedly could not be reached on who should cough up the funds. We gather that Dr. Evans' salary will be on par with what he received as a director with the Ministry of Education. A final agreement was scheduled to be signed this afternoon. Attempts to obtain comment from Dr. Evans have so far met with no response, but it is understood he could be at his new desk as early as Monday of next week. In other news, as the controversy in the UK rages on over the treatment of descendants of the so-called Windrush generation, many people outside of the UK are weighing in on the debate. Many of the Windrush generation, named after the ship HMT Empire Windrush, came from African and Caribbean countries under a rule allowing freedom of movement within the Commonwealth. Many residents in the UK whose parents emigrated to Britain under the scheme have found themselves subjected to deportation because they were never issued immigration papers. Many in Bermuda have taken to Facebook and Twitter to express sympathy for those facing deportations. Bermuda MP Chris Famous, who holds parental links to the West Indies, is one of the many who believes the British government has got it wrong. On their way to Britain, the first wave of West Indians... Let's take it back from the beginning, um, to right. In the 1600s, Britain and other European countries basically invaded the West Indies or the Caribbean, as some call it. They enslaved millions of Africans, and for 300 years, plantations across the Caribbean made Britain billions of dollars. That's what the British Empire was founded on, slavery. The British government and many of the British people have always viewed people from the West Indies and other quote-unquote colonists as less than, as we are the colonized people, we aren't equal to them. So for them, how they saw whether they be persons from the wind rush or persons from India, the, the concept when they came to England in 1950s was that we were less than them. So these sort of policies are going to go forward from that mentality. And as to what he thought the British government should do to resolve the situation, Mr. Famous told us. How much we value the contribution that has been made. Well, I'm happy that this week the um, prime ministers of, from many of the Caribbean islands, including Jamaica, Barbados and Trinidad, were in England. And they basically forced the hand of uh, Theresa May to accept that the policy was punitive, it was wrong. And in her end, where she's going to do whatever she can to normalize the status of those persons. But let's look, let's look at it in a moral context, right? You colonized my country. You, you enslaved me for 300 years. You then asked my parents to come to England in the 1940s to build back your country. My parents bring me up here. I'll spend 70 years of my life here, 50, 70 years of my life here. And now you're telling me. You got to go back to where you don't even know where you're from. 
let's look at the moral context. Britain likes to portray itself as having this moral, um, be this moral lighthouse in the world. Let's let's do the right thing. Give the people full British British citizenship. And we'll have more news for you after this short break. Please stay with us. You can count on us. Value packed fresh Purdue chicken leg quarters, a dollar seventy nine per pound. Only a dollar ninety nine for a large California grapefruit. Only a dollar ninety nine for one roll Scott Juice a sheet paper towel. Save a dollar six on select varieties of minute made one hundred percent fruit juices. Six seventy nine for a ten pack. Save half price on dental antiseptic. Just two ninety nine for a five hundred milliliter bottle. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more super specials. You can count on us. Imagine your home working as hard as you, harnessing the power of the sun while you work. We work. Think solar with BAE. Imagine more power, more often with BAE. Welcome back. Well, a man appeared in magistrate's court today accused of shooting a shooting seven years ago. Kyrie Smith-Williams is charged with unlawfully shooting Tyrone Pedro in Warwick on October 24, 2011, with intent to cause him grievous bodily harm. Tarai Trot has our story. 27-year-old Smith Williams was also charged with using a firearm to commit an indictable offense. The case will be heard at the Supreme Court, and the defendant was remanded in custody until his next hearing on June the 1st. Meanwhile, a 20-year-old man from Sands was charged today with aggravated burglary. Anthony Williams, Jr. is accused of entering a Frizzles Road property as a trespasser with intent to steal on April 18th. Prosecutors also allege Mr. Williams was in the possession of a two-inch knife. He was released on bail and will appear at the Supreme Court arraignment session. In another case, a man who admitted attacking his wife during an argument has been given a six-month conditional discharge. Magistrate's court heard that Morlando Morris repeatedly punched his wife and struck her with a piece of wood during a row on April 18th in St. George's. Prosecutors also maintain that the 37-year-old then fetched a knife and pointed it at her, an accusation Morris denied. But he admitted he slapped his wife and prodded her with a piece of wood. Morris's wife, who was present in the public gallery, told the court that she wanted matters to be dropped so she and her husband could work it out. However, prosecutors were unwilling to drop the assault charge. Magistrate Kamisi Dukumbo addressed the defendant, telling him, quote, Having heard from you and your wife, who has come to the court to try to save you, I am not going to waste the resources of this country or the time. I see you have no previous convictions, and so I'm going to impose a six-month conditional discharge. Go about your business, unquote. In other news, the family and friends of Ellsworth Christopher tonight coming to terms with his passing. Mr. Christopher was a keen player and administrator who served many years shaping the Summers Isles Cricket League, the Bermuda Cricket Board and Devonshire Recreation Club as the president. Earl Baisden spoke with Nadine Henry, the current president of the Devonshire Recreation Club. Ellsworth Christopher passed away earlier this week. President of the Devonshire Recreation Club, Nadine Henry, had these words of what he meant to the club. To Devonshire Recreation Club, uh, Mr. Christopher means everything. Um, I, one word can sum that up. Not only was Christopher ready and willing to give information or advice, he was the master of history of this club. He was our walking tax. You know, um, anything that you wanted to know, anything someone called to find out about the club, we generally refer to him. Um, Mr. Christopher was there from the beginning. And I'm being very careful how and how much I say because I don't want to preempt the words that I'll share on Tuesday. Um, but I will tell you this, that he was there before the club actually moved. Um, no, Mr. Christopher isn't a founding member, of course, because he was in his early years, elementary school years, but he watched the club shift from where it was located on Palmetto Road um, to where it came around to Frog Lane in the late 1940s. Um, so he has basically watched Devin Chirac from the beginning at a young age, and he's grown with it, and he's stuck with it. How much history does Devonshire Recreation Club lose with the loss of Mr. Christopher? Well, I would say we lose much, but it's not something that we can't um, gather. He's definitely taught us um, where to look, 
um, to be humble enough to ask and how to find it. Um, but easy reference, we've lost it all. Because <laughs> at the drop of a hat, at the, the moment of a call, he would be able to answer every question. Um, if it isn't written anywhere else, I would say everything goes with him. Rest in peace, Mr. Christopher. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting News. In other news, Bulls Head Car Park's new barrier system will go live on Monday at 8 a.m. using a one-ticket system. We caught up with City of Hamilton's staff on Elliott Street, where the new system has been in place for a while to see how it all works. Come Monday morning, the barrier system will be in place at the Elliott Street Car Park and Bulls Head Car Park. The City of Hamilton says the payment options are not dissimilar to City Hall. However, the charges are slightly different. At Bullshead Car Park, a total of nine pay stations will be used. Five on the ground floor, three on the second, and one on the third. So what will you be charged per hour? Bullshead will be charged at a dollar an hour, up to five hours. And once that five hour limit has passed, it will no longer be any fees. So if they stay the whole day, it'll be a five dollar charge per that visit. If you lose your ticket slip, you'll have to pay five dollars to exit the car park. When you drive into the car park, you push the button, you take a ticket. Once you get that ticket, you keep it safe either in your purse, your car, your wallet, wherever you want to put it. And when you're ready to leave the car park or together with your vehicle, you come into one of the main machines, that's a pay station, and you just scan the ticket and it will let you know how much you need to pay. Taking your ticket, you simply insert it into one of the blue machines to scan the barcode at the end of your parking period. The amount owed will appear on the screen. It will accept bills, cards, and coins. Be sure you have the exact fee as no change will be given. Press OK for your receipt, then use your same entry ticket at the barrier exit gate. For those who are more tech savvy, the system accepts payment via the Easy Park app. There are a few options actually. Um, they could use the mobile app, they can use it on the phone, and once they scan the ticket on the phone, that would activate the gate to open it. Um, they can also get the swipe cards that were now instituting at City Hall where they can buy a card for $100 a month at either, for either car park, Bulls Head or at Elliott Street and they have free access to go in and out with that card. It's going to be designed in a way that once they swipe in, all they have to do is just swipe to get out. And if you get into trouble with the machines, there's a number to call. Let's just say your payment option cancelled. Um, it got a note jam coin jam, anything goes wrong, or even if somebody's card isn't recognized, they can call that number and we have a team one that's always in Hamilton between the hours of 7.30 to 6 and after 6, the helpline, if necessary, will come in and assist right away. We also have the option of opening the gates in the event it's a need, it's an emergency. Both Bulls Head and the Elliott Street Car Park are open between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and are free on Sundays and public holidays. Remember, you'll have 30 minutes after payment to exit the car park. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Great explanation, Jasmine. Turning to weather news, sunny periods and cooler temperatures for our weekend. Here are the details from AccuWeather. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and we've made it to the weekend. And if you have any big plans this weekend, just know that our temperatures are going to be cooling off, and uh, it's going to be a little bit breezy outside as well. You can see here on our radar, last couple of hours, we are going to have a front quickly sweeping through the region, and that is going to be shifting our winds. So eventually, they're going to be coming in out of the north and west. And in result, that's where we'll get the cooler temperatures. Can't roll out a sprinkle as we head into this evening. Otherwise, it is just going to be a little bit cool outside tonight, especially compared to the last couple of nights and early mornings. This is our water vapor. The white showing you where the moisture is. The yellow is where the dry air is, and that drier air will be pushing over the island here as we head into the weekend. Looks like a pretty decent weekend to be out and about. Temperatures right now still sitting comfortable in the low 70s. Humidity between 70 and 75 percent. Winds are out of the west-southwest, but 
again, once this front passes through, they will be shifting out of the north and west and we'll be seeing some cooler air move in. Uh, your conditions outside on the water improving, but outside the reef still a bit choppy out there between 4 and 7 feet. So the forecast for tonight, a big temperature drop here. We're falling into the low 60s under partly cloudy skies. This evening, can't rule out a sprinkle or two, but otherwise we will see uh, partly cloudy conditions late tonight. No marine alerts that I have to tell you about, so you're in good shape if perhaps you're heading out toward the water this weekend. Your high tide 1 comes in just after 1 o'clock tomorrow morning, and high tide 2 uh, kind of around lunchtime, right around 1.30. And if you have any big plans for tomorrow, uh, I know a lot's going on. Uh, the Ag Show at the Botan Botanical Gardens, uh, you're in good shape there. No need to bring the rain gear with you. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 60s, a step down with temperatures compared to the last couple of days in the 70s. But overall, it's looking nice, partly sunny skies here in Hamilton. Now, if you are doing any traveling, uh, improving weather across the East Coast here, Toronto, 54 degrees, partly sunny skies on Saturday. New York City and Boston, a little bit cooler than normal, mid to upper 50s, but overall a dry weekend there. Also dry in Atlanta on Saturday. However, they will be expecting some rain by Sunday. And we do have some rain impacting several other, other locations. Jamaica dealing with showers and thunderstorms right now. Also a couple of spotty showers in Barbados and Trinidad. But temperatures are a little bit toastier there in the mid to upper 80s. Not going to be quite that warm, but we will see a rebound with our temperatures by the time we get into early next week. It's just going to be a cool weekend here across the island. So you're in good shape on Saturday, partly sunny, 68 degrees, a blend of sun and clouds on Sunday. Then as we head into early next week, temperatures will start to warm up Tuesday into Wednesday. However, watch for more clouds and perhaps a few showers as well. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. My name is Kevin Roberts. I'm a taxi driver slash ambassador. My father's with BF&M, so am I. My half of my family always been seen to be with Bermuda Fire Marine. I tried a different provider at one time, but I wasn't too happy with the competition because back then it took too long to settle claims. They questioned every claim, and I never really had that problem with BF&M. I'm quite happy with it. It's one of the most uncomfortable things to think about. But the truth is, you are going to die. I would be on a ventilator for a maximum of four days. I don't want any pain. Medicating me to a point that I'm unable to communicate, I'm okay with that. In no situation would I want to be kept alive on machines. Mortality is an inevitability. So why is talking about it so taboo? Having no plan in place can leave families at loggerheads and can be a major drain on the healthcare system. Join me, Tony Waterman, for a week-long special looking at end-of-life care here in Bermuda. From hospice and wills to the latest technology helping seniors thrive, we'll arm you with the information to help demystify that final journey we all have to take. Talking Death, starting April 23rd. Welcome back. Well, a record number of 56 volunteers have signed up to build homes from brick and mortar in Bangalore, India, with the Bermuda Overseas Missions. The group traveling this summer consists of 38 students, beyond rugby members and several families, to work alongside Habitat for Humanity. We spoke with 17-year-olds Naomi Proctor and Naomi Fubler, who explained why they chose to volunteer for the project. Well, I'd been interested in it for a while, and I think that this year, since I heard they were going to India, I thought that'd be a really great opportunity to see another like perspective of the world and just broaden my horizons. And you've been before? Yes. For me, I traveled to Malawi, Africa, last year, and it was a great experience. Um, I got to see a country, a third world country, and people living in poverty, and got to lend a helping hand. So for me, the fact that I had another opportunity to go again and help out, I um, thought that I would jump on it. And what did you get from the experience of traveling to Malawi? I learned that not everyone has all the um, same opportunities and things that you have. Not everything's handed to these people. They have to work extremely hard to survive, essentially. And um, I learned that it's not just me in this world. It's other people that need help and that I'll do as much as I can to help them. David Thompson, president of the BOM, believes the work provides young people with an eye-opening experience. 
I think we count 21 trips in total. I think this is our 21st trip now. So it's been a lot of trips, you know, over 500 volunteers. We've built over 100 homes. Um, we've certainly got a lot of experience under our belt taking students to different countries. And this is the largest group to ever go, 56 volunteers. It is, actually. I, I did take 50 to Romania back in 2012, I believe. Um, so this is a new challenge with 56. Um, I was a little surprised at the, uh, the number of people who, who expressed an interest to participate, which you know really excites me, and I can't say no. <laughs> so um, I welcome them. Um, what's a little different as well about this year is, I mean, we have students going and we have adults, but we have families. So mom, dad, and their kids going as a family group. So we have, you know, three sets of families, you know, with, with their kids all attending as well, which I think is a wonderful experience for the family as a whole because, you know, it gives them a chance to bond. It's a chance to visit a country that is impoverished, um, certainly doesn't have uh, what we have in Bermuda. Um, so they get to see with their eyes, you know, their own eyes, what's going on in the world you know people who are thinking about trying to find their basic needs people are living on on less than two dollars a day you know the the uh the absolute bottom level and um it's not just to to go and, and walk and see that but it's also to make a difference Turning to sports, Lamont Marshall broke a seven-year-old record while competing in California. Bermuda coach Kyle Lightborn and Oakville coach Duncan Wilde commented on the game that saw Bermuda win 3-1 to one last night at the National Sports Center. And Bermuda's under-17 women's national team are in action this evening. Earl Bazin has the details and more in tonight's sports report. Lamont Marshall, last night competing in California, broke the 10,000-meter record that he had held for seven years. Competing in the men's 10,000-meter invite, Marshall finished 35th, clocking an overall time of 30.08.21. Marshall's time took 12 seconds off his own record time of 30.20.54. He sat back on April 28, 2011 in Philadelphia. A Bermuda National Select team defeated the Oakville Blue Devils 3-1 at the National Sports Center last evening. Bermuda took the lead midway through the first half when Lejean Simmons scored. Felipe Villa equalized for the Oakville Blue Devils at the 42nd minute when he squeezed between two Bermuda defenders to score a header from a corner. In stoppage time, Bermuda would get the winner when Simmons scored his second goal of the game. And then a minute later, Bermuda would score again when Janico Seeley found the back of the net. Bermuda coach Kyle Lightborn described the match this way. We just rode our lock a little bit. You know, in the second half, they came out and I thought they were bossing the game until we made a couple of minor adjustments with, with our shape. And um, Keyshawn Bean, um, yeah, he came on and he put his foot on the ball a little bit more. We were able to build a bit better and I put the, a little bit more physical presence up top and, and I think that made the difference in the end. Um, you know, we felt that we could get that one little one-two pass and get in, and and in the end it happened. Like, and I was pleased that we were able to do that because teams have done that to us. Oakfield coach Duncan Wilde evaluated the game. We knew they had lots of pace in the first few minutes, and that's all we were really concerned with. And um, from our perspective, we thought we gave two really bad goals away. You know, two defensive errors that is not like us normally. But that's why we're doing this at this time of the year. You know, we made a lot of changes that, again, we wouldn't normally do. Uh, but all credit to Bermuda. They pushed and pushed and, you know, they're not afraid to, to take us on and get the ball in behind. They did very well. And then, you know, at the end of the night, they deserve their win. Meanwhile, Victor Moses was the match winner as Chelsea eased the pressure on their London rivals Arsenal by denting the key wells and his Burnley teammates surged to sixth place. Moses produced a first half cross which spawned Kevin Long's own goal and then drilled home a decisive low shot to make it 2-1 after Ashley Barnes had equalized for Burnley. Bowles made his way onto the pitch in the 87th minute but could not help his team find the equalizer. The Bermuda Open Volleyball Tournament got underway inside the Work Academy Gymnasium where six matches took place on day one. The Fun Divas picked up a straight sets win over the Paradise Hitters 25-12, 25-11, while the Island Girls defeated the Fall River Fury 25-8, 25-8. The Digs got by the Paradise Hitters 25-3 and 25-7, while the Island Girls defeated the Junior National Team in a close match 25-18, 25-22. The Fun Divas picked up a 25-14, 25-14 win over the Red Aces, and the Whitecaps defeated the Fall River Fury 25-15, 25-17.
Darry Rollins and his Sussex Seconds teammates went down by an inning and eight runs on day three of the three-day second 11 championship match against Essex. On the final day, Sussex resumed on 152 for two. And they will be bowled out for 242. Tom Haynes was their top scorer with 104. Rollins was out for 35. Steven Snater was the pick of the Essex bowlers with figures of 7.3 overs, three for 35. The Southwestern Athletic Conference SWAC office revealed the 2018 All SWAC Women's Tennis Teams with Jackson State's number one player, Tyler Smith, named back to back SWAC Women's Tennis Player of the Year. Smith was also named to the All Conference Singles First Team. Jillian Tessera began competing in the CSI 2 Eschwalder International Horse Jumping Event in Germany. On day one, Tessera competed in three classes. Competed on the Go Tour, Tessera and Amarula finished second, clocking a clear round time of 57.26 in a field of 61 competitors. On the Diamond Tour, Tessera and Chakova finished 67th, clocking a time of 69.69, but they had eight penalty fall points. On the Silver Tour, Tessera and Iluna Di Cantaro finished 41st. They clocked a time of 81.84, but they had 10 penalty points. Four points. The 2018 Agricultural Exhibition got underway at the Botanical Gardens yesterday with the Bermuda Equestrian Federation taking to the center ring for equestrian show jumping. In the Island Girl Trophy class, Melinda de Costa riding Forza claimed the title, while Philip Correa and Bon Voyage were second. Michael Rodriguez and Casanova finished third. Eleanor Cox and Faceoff won the Don Olindo Cup with Kristen Bean and Radio Not finishing second. Tyler James and Hey Dude finished third. The Clay Merrill Trophy was claimed by Cody Rigo and Casanova with Casey Truin and Forza second, Christian Truin and Roseland finished in third. Caribbean Basketball Confederation has announced the FIBA America Cup 2021 Caribbean Pre-Basketball Qualifiers. Bermuda have been pitted in Group B, and on June 24th, they will take on Antigua. The next day, they will take on Barbados. On June 27th, Bermuda will face Montserrat before closing out the group stage against Haiti on June 28th. These are the faces of the under-17 women's national team that will represent Bermuda starting tonight against Canada in the World Cup Qualifiers in Nicaragua. I'm Earl Bayston with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Check out the great products at our $4 Depot stores. Party bags, candles, soaps, and a variety of health and beauty items, even candy. A number of kitchen items, aluminum baking pans, an assortment of socks in various sizes, even baby products. For choice of items for only $2.50 each. Stop by any of our four stores today. The Dollar Depot, stretching your dollars further. Are you looking to expand your customer base, increase sales, and be a part of the Island Community Events for 2018? Bermuda Broadcasting Company can make that happen. Be a part of World Cup 2018, Bermuda Day Half Marathon, Bermuda Heroes Weekend, Cup Match Classic, and Eastern Counties Cricket. Inquire about our new advertising opportunities, whether big or small. We will deliver. Come and see us at Fort Hill, Devonshire, or email us at sales at bbc.pm, or send us a message on Facebook at Bermuda Broadcasting. Glorious April sunshine and lots of people having fun at a signature Bermuda event. Today was day two of the Ag Show at the Botanical Gardens. Our Kyle McNeil was there to capture the sights and sounds. And we leave you with a reminder, the event continues through tomorrow. I'm Diane Brewer. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Good night.